allow me to take him to church. Because I thought about this for some time before I wrote down what I thought so that I know what I think. It's one of the things that I do every single day is write down what I think I know and then go check on what I think I know to see if it measures up to fact. Because if you listened to the show yesterday, I got a little too animated in a casual conversation with my man Mayberry about Hamilton because I have an intense dislike for conspiracy. Because conspiracy is a way in which we spread lies, not fact. And your feelings don't matter to fact. This is why I start this by saying this cancel culture trash is just that. If your favorite people are being canceled, it's because they are ignorant at best or hateful at worst. Neither is a permissible excuse. Read a book. Investigate what you believe. Be done playing ball with these crusty clowns. Hitler canceled a lot of people. It's called the Holocaust. Hello. The headline to the ESPN story is Eagles Jackson after post. I don't hate Jews. That's the flag on the play. And like 2019 OU Texas, we've yet to even start in on everything Deshaun Jackson thought he was right about when he shared posts to his more than 1.4 million people who follow him on Instagram. 910,000 folks follow him on Twitter. And a post he shared featured a quote attributed to Adolf Hitler that said white Jews will quote blackmail America. They will extort America. Their plan for world domination won't work if the Negroes know who they are, end quote. And he didn't stop there. He managed to fumble again before reaching the goal line when he shared two more posts on IG on Saturday and Monday that revealed his admiration for Louis Farrakhan, a man who both the Anti-Defamation League and the Southern Poverty Law Center view as anti-Semitic. His ignorance is damning. His ignorance is infuriating. His use of his platform in that way is also his right, according to the First Amendment of the Constitution of these United States. That right, however, does not protect you from being pwned by all those with a single clue. And we must speak on this because, as Ella Wheeler Wilcox wrote, to sin by silence, we would shit, we, when we should protest, makes cowards out of men. She's echoed by Mary Shelley, who wrote in her novel Lodor, words have more power than anyone can guess. It is by words that the world's greatest fight, now in these civilized times, is carried on. I never hesitated to use them when I fought any battle for the miserable and oppressed. Jackson deleted the tweets. He deleted the IG post. Never mind that those posts offended Philadelphia Eagles owner Jeffrey Lurie and general manager Howie Roseman, both of whom are Jewish. Never mind his apology to them and his public one on IG, where he claimed not to know he was quoting Hitler's hatred or that he doesn't hate the Jewish community. Mind that those tweets came from a 33-year-old who has more than enough time to think about all of this from the protection of millions of dollars playing a child's game. Mind that this is a man with a foundation that bears his name, that supports everything from pancreatic cancer awareness to social justice to the Wounded Warriors Project to anti-bullying. And here he is using language that is duplicitous, with the white supremacist and a xenophobic charlatan and engaging in bullying in an entire community. And for what? For Black Lives Matter? No. You can't co-op a moment to yell for equality to further the needs of Black Americans to ignorantly spread lies about Jewish people. More than that, Jackson lacks a historical perspective that would lead him to not only feel even more ashamed, but bring him closer to a people whose history is among the most enriching in the world. New York staff writer Adam Kirsch gives one entry point 
into this with his criticism of two books about Jewish history. Kirsch notes, ever since Judea was crushed by the Roman Empire, the Jews had possessed none of these things that made for the usual history of a nation. Territory, sovereignty, power, armies, kings. Instead, the noteworthy events in Jewish history were expulsion, such as the one that drove the Jews out of England in, 19, in 1290 and in Spain in 1492, or massacres such as the ones that cost thousands of Jewish lives in Rhineland during the Crusades and in Ukraine in the 17th century. Add to this list the Russian Revolution, the Holocaust, many sought to skew, refuse to teach, or outright deny yet they remain. At the turn of the 19th century, there were no Egyptian pharaohs left, no Sparta led by a modern Leonidas, no Roman emperor for the Senate to appease as Jews continued to practice survival and persist rather than simply resist. Even as Hegel observed, the Temple of Zion is destroyed. The God-serving nation is scattered to the winds. Theirs is conviction. Theirs is a fervent need to continue to make past present. Heinrich Graz observed that the religion of Judaism is not a religion of the present, but of the future, which looks forward to the ideal future age, when the knowledge of God and the reign of justice and contentment shall have united all men in the bonds of brotherhood. Kirsch notes, Jews are always and have always been diasporic, living outside the land of Israel as well as in it. And Jews were always religiously innovative, contesting the centralized authority of priesthood and orthodoxy. In Simon Skama's The Story of the Jews, Volume 2, Belonging 1492 to 1900, he notes the story of Elephantine, which sounds remarkably like an American city. It is worldly. It is cosmopolitan. It is vernacular. Vernacular here serves its two primary meanings. Number one, the language or dialect spoken by the ordinary people in particular a country or region. And number two, architecture concerned with domestic and functional rather than public or monumental buildings. In his book, Skama describes Jews at prayer, quote, it's only the Christians who bow their heads and shut their mouths in their houses of prayer. Us, we chant, we gabble, we cantillate, we shout, as do many black folks, Deshaun. We speak in tongues, dance in the aisles, shout back at the preacher and give a joyful cry unto the Lord, connecting our reconstructed past as with our immediate present as we pray for the brightest possible future. Jews connect with their past through parable, ritual, story, and symbol. I first learned this, like children learn most things. My mother sought out an entertaining story that might teach us a smattering, my sister and I, about Jewish culture. And so she stuck a rented movie into our VHS tape player and watched this great bearded father tell me about himself and his family. The way he began was by acknowledging a very peculiar sight. A fiddler on the roof. Sounds crazy, no? But in our little village of Anatevka, you might say every one of us is a fiddler on the roof, trying to scratch out a pleasant, simple tune without breaking his neck. It isn't easy, he said. You may ask, why do we stay up there if it's so dangerous? We stay because Anatevka is our home. And how do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in one word. Tradition. That is the central argument of Yosef Yerushalmi's 1982 book, Sekor, one of the most influential works on Jewish history of the last half century. Sakur is the Hebrew word for remember, a command delivered many times in the Bible. And it is possible to see Judaism itself as a technologically advanced miracle, a set of practices 
designed to make the past present. Read the Bible closely and you'll find that the holiday of Passover, which commemorates the Jews' exodus from Egypt, is established by Moses before the exodus actually takes place. It is as though the miracle happens primarily so it can be remembered. Theirs is a history that dates back 3,000 years. These are the people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of Moses, and the lawful commandments. We still teach among them, thou shall not bear false witness against thy neighbor. It means don't lie. Don't traffic in lies. It means don't repeat lies, which is exactly what Jackson has done. Jackson is a man who claims to be Christian in his faith, and yet, like so many Christians, refuses to follow through in his faith at this time when it is being tested. Love thy neighbor as thyself. A Jewish man said that. His name is Jesus.